Welcome back to Signature Sense. My name is Ryan, and today I am very excited to announce we're going to be testing Mega Flora by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Mega Flora, why I'm so excited about this is because this is Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Aromatic Fougere. Aromatic Fougeres are one of, if not my favorite genre of scents. And this one here has, in traditional Fougere fashion of the old style uh, creations, has 17 different notes listed on the website. All naturals. Things like pine, let's see, it's got like pine, fir, it's got the oak moss, juniper, French lavender, bergamot, pedigree, and rose geranium, clary sage, vetiver. It just, the list goes on. So I am really, really looking forward to getting my nose on this. As always, we're going to smell it out of the bottle and on paper to see what the kind of baseline is. And then I'm going to apply it on the skin, give it an initial reaction, and then I'm going to go away and come back and experience the dry down, which apparently this has a very dramatic dry down. It's something that is supposed to be like kind of like molds and shifts, not hugely surprising with all the different notes. And that it's all naturals, I think is going to lend to a very, very interesting dry down as well. So I'll come back and share my impressions. So let's first get this bag open and smell out of the bottle. Now Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements is a company that I have really started to fall for, uh, to be honest with you. This is, I think, my fourth sample that I've tried from them. I have 11 total, and every single one of them has impressed me. They are, uh, the natural ingredients that they use in these, it just takes, it's so refreshing and pleasant to the nose to smell all these different classical style formulations. In a natural version, it makes me think about were some of these classic ones the way they originally were made with more natural type of ingredients versus the synthetic stuff that's used nowadays. So I have the bottle open here. Let's give this a smell. Ooh. So on top, what I'm getting primarily to my nose is like a vanilla, it's like a vanilla tonka bean type of scent with I think that's a lavender. They have it listed as a French lavender. I don't know if I've ever smelled French lavender before. I know there's different variations of lavender. Uh, one of the ones most common I actually smell in these type of fragrances actually is lavendum. It's like a hybrid between lavender. I happen to get the chance to go to a essential oil a store where they have a huge selection of different essential oils. And I smelled lavender and I smelled lavendum. And lavendum is the one that I, it's, it's more, uh, it's not quite as floral as lavender. It's a little bit more like what you smell in the Fougere. But this is like a vanilla leaf lavender. It smells a little bit like a very fine soap. So that's very nice. Now, as I can imagine, this stuff on paper is going to develop. Uh, this profile is going to uh, spread out a lot with all these different notes. So let's go ahead and get it on some paper. Okay, I got some nice paper here. I'm going to give this a couple... Maybe one or so. Oh, that's plenty. One big splash. Nice big blotch. And let's give this a little chance to dry down and start spreading out. Last time I made the mistake of, or not the last time, but one of the times I made the mistake of going in too early. And what happens is it starts to mushroom clot after a few minutes because all the alcohol goes away. So I want to give this a chance to, okay. It smells so far like it does in the bottle. It's got a very, yeah, it's like a French, uh, it's a French, it's like a vanilla lavender. So nothing too crazy off the paper. Honestly, this is not what I expected so far. Okay, wait, hold on a second. Here we go. It's starting to dry down. So. Now I got some rose coming through. Definitely a strong floral. Yes, it's starting to shift now. So it's like a rose, maybe a geranium that are popping through. It's not a very, um, so far it's probably still drying. It is still drying a little bit. It's not like a, it's not a powerhouse type of smell. Or it's not that sticky synthetic, a uh, real thick, it's very light and crisp as I've come to expect and appreciate a lot with these. They're very, very light, very, very crisp, and they're so fresh. Almost any of these scents from Phoenix Art Accoutrements, the, I can speak only to the EDCs. I haven't smelled the EDPs yet, 
which are the same thing, just a little more concentrated. But these all so far make excellent freshies. They're just so clean. Okay, so nothing really crazy to report. It just smells like the the, the lavender vanilla and a little bit of a, uh, actually the floral is kind of taking the center stage and the, the lavender is kind of second and the vanilla is getting pushed back a little bit. So it's continuing to morph. So I'm going to go ahead now and dump this and decant this into a nice little spray bottle here and get this on my skin. Let's give this a nice spray and see what we pick up in the air as well. Ooh, very nice in the air. It's uh, It kind of reminds me a little bit of a fancy hotel, like a fragrance from a fancy hotel. Almost like a... Kind of like you'd expect to smell the sheets or the pillow. It could be that or it could be like a very nice soap. It's, it's kind of walking that line of like a soapy, a very high-end lavender French, or not French, I keep saying French, lavender vanilla soap. It's, it's kind of what it smells like in the air and right away. So I'm going to put a little bit more of this stuff on because I want to get a really good impression out of it. And I've learned these, these uh, you can't really overspray these. Although they have really nice projection, it's not it's not overbearing. Okay, let me put a little bit on my hand as well so I can keep my nose in front of it when I want. Let's see. There we go. Nice shine. Give this a second. Now let's see how my skin projects this. So far with every one of these, um, my skin projects this way differently than it does smell on paper, uh, especially I think the last one I did, uh, I forget the name of it. It was the one with the benzoin. It was uh, the green parasso, their homage to green parasso. Man, my skin versus the paper was a night and day difference. It was a whole different scent. Whoa, and this one is too. Oh my gosh. So the whole French lavender vanilla thing is, this is floral. And this, I've noticed my skin, this is like the third or fourth fragrance that I've tested recently that is pumping and churning florals right out of the right off the gate more than anything else so i guess my skin likes to promote the the florals which i believe the florals are the heart in this and my skin typically likes to promote the hearts uh, really really fast i've noticed that as well from doing these tests so the floral is a combination of like it smells like rose geranium lavender it is quite flowery floral the flowery floral, I think, is coming from the rose, is sort of the last uh, aftertaste you're getting. It kind of comes in with the lavender, lavender geranium. Very nice, though. It's, it's, now it's drying. It's, it's kind of still settling. It's not there, so I'm just kind of, you know, sharing what's coming off right away. It's settling a little bit, and the vanilla is kind of picking up a little bit. So far, it's very, very nice. It's a very, very high-end smelling floral is what it smells like. It's like not a huge surprise because if you haven't watched my past videos, I think I already shared in this video. I can't remember because these are all starting to blend together in my brain. This guy uses all naturals. All the ingredients are 100% essential oils, and apparently he even diffuses a lot of his own oils, so they're extremely fresh. And it gives his fragrances such a beautiful, uh, uh, crisp, uh, clean, high-end, high-quality smell to them. Yeah, so I think I'm going to stop it here. Right now, off the skin, it just smells like a high-end uh, rose, lavender, geranium type of scent. There is a vanilla that's kind of uh, gently playing in the background. I'm looking forward to seeing how the pine and the fir and the juniper all play into this. There's also sage. You got the oak moss, the vetiver. This is going to be very, very interesting. So I will check back in when I uh, come back after a few hours of wearing this at least. I'm going to go have some lunch and do some errands. So I'll talk to you Okay, in a I am back and I am recording this for a second time. The first one didn't work. So at least I have my thoughts very clear. I have some great stuff to share about this Mega Flora. Some nice observations about how it performs, how it projects, what is the dry down stage is like, when do I see this being worn, and who do I see this being worn by? And then kind of my final thoughts and summary on this scent and if I would buy it myself. So let's look at the dry down status. Now I already articulated the opening in the beginning of this video. In the heart of this, those florals really become pronounced. Now 
On my skin, that floral is being led by a rose type of, of floral, like a rose absolute smell. The rose and that tonka bean vanilla note, it's a vanilla, it's not like a vanilla extract like you'd smell out of the, the cabinet in the kitchen. It's, it's more of like a nuttier vanilla, it's not sweet, it's, and it's very prominent off of my skin. Um, that tonka bean type of note and that rose are really kind of leading the pack. And then there's, there's supporting florals in there, but in the air, that's what I'm getting wafts of the most is that kind of rose tonka bean uh, combination. And that's the heart of it. And then the dry down is kind of the same, except for that rose and that tonka bean thing is very prominent in the beginning in that heart for the, like the first couple hours. And then after that, it does start to calm down and settle more. And it becomes a little bit smoother where it's not like those are so like out in front, like with the neon sign, they kind of, they kind of fall back and, and blend a little more with the profile. But you know, for me, I, uh, this one, I know it has 17 ingredients and it has some comment about um, this being a very one that has these very, uh, more dramatic dry down. I didn't get that dramatic dry down. It kind of just went from loud to less loud on my skin. Of course, there was the opening, which was clear and distinct with more of that uh, lavender vanilla type of thing. And then the rose was there. And then the, that rose floral uh, heart kind of really came through. And then it just kind of calmed down. I didn't get any of the pine, the juniper. Um, I think there's evergreen or something like that. The vetiver, the oak moss. I think when I really dig my, my, hand, my nose into my hand, there is a little bit of that bitterness from the oak moss and cedar woodsy at this part of the dry down, which is about, I would say, a little bit over four hours at this point. But it's not, uh, it's not something you can get in the air. It's something that you really kind of get off of the skin. Now, this is, my, this is my skin. I have the paper here. And on the paper, this is kind of similar to what it is on my skin, to be honest. It's got that, that rose sort of rounded a little bit with the vanilla note is kind of still leading the charge off the paper. And uh, it's so, it's that's interesting, it's kind of very similar in that way. I will say I'm getting a little bit more of the uh, bitter base in this off of the skin when I put my nose into it. Off the paper, I, I it's, it's just floral overwhelming my nose and the floral tonka bean. So the projection, the sillage, and the longevity, so far, this is performing just like the other Phoenix Argent accoutrements I have tested, which is very consistent, which is very, very cool. And good to know because I think I've tested around four so far. And the, the consistency that these have performed makes me think that the rest of these are all going to perform that, which is kind of nice because you know what you're getting yourself into no matter what scent you buy. Now, it's promoted as or marketed as an aftershave EDT. But this definitely is not aftershave. This is performing at least like a cologne, if not EDT. Um, some people, it's going to perform more like an EDT on. Um, the projection is very solid the first couple hours. It's got a nice scent bubble. I can't measure it with a ruler, but it's it's there. I'm getting strong, prominent wafts for the first couple hours of this. And even now, after around four hours, it's not a skin scent. It's definitely still projecting. It's still churning on my skin, which is really great. I think this is going to go at least around six, seven hours. Some people may be able to stretch this further. I definitely think you'll be able to stretch it further by putting it on clothes. And as I have mentioned before, they have a huge product line of all their scents. If you want to use the shampoo, the lotion, uh, the uh, soaps they have, they, they have all kinds of stuff. The deodorant, you'll be able to get more out of the scent and probably take it the entire day. Now, one thing I want to say before I segue into when and who is this for, I want to also remark about the quality of the scent. Just like the other Phoenix Arts Accoutrements, this one is also not a disappointment in, in the regard of the quality of the smell. The, you know, the, the, this stuff is set apart from the stuff you're buying in the stores, the synthetic stuff, by the natural essential oils and the quality of the oils that they're using. You smell different when you're wearing this. You smell, it's just, uh, the, it smells like, a, it doesn't smell like nobody, if you're wearing this, Nobody is ever going to say to you like, hey, nice cheap cologne. Nobody will say that to you while wearing uh, this or any of the Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements I'm wearing. They all smell very high quality. And this stuff is $26 for 100 mil. It's a very, very high value for what you're getting. Any of the scents, if you find one you like, the quality for what you're getting for the EDC aftershave is profound. I haven't tried the EDPs yet. 
But um, you know, maybe at some point, I honestly don't really see a need to do that. I kind of like the price point at twenty-six dollars for hundred mil, of course, excluding shipping, which is around about six bucks if you live in the U.S. I believe. I can overspray this. I can reapply it, and and just not have a care in the world. And it's easy to replace. I, I really like it so far. And again, these samples are one dollar. Now, when and who is it for? I think this is a uh, scent that would be really most appropriate for like the springtime. I think summertime, this is also probably one that you can pull, pull off in the summer. I think it could work in the fall and the winter too. I think it's somewhat versatile. I don't, it doesn't have anything too polarizing that's saying, oh, this is for sure this time, this is for sure that time. This one is more of a, a versatile scent because it's a floral kind of thing. It's really just a matter of taste. I, I don't really th see this being any dedicated to any one season. Who is it for? Because of the way this stuff smells, honestly, I don't think this is for a younger audience. I think this is for a mature, a more mature audience. I think this is uh, somewhat unisex, maybe slightly leaning masculine. But honestly, if I smelled this on a guy, I would say, yeah, that's a man's scent. If I smelled it on a woman, I would say, yeah, that's, that's a woman's scent. I think whoever's wearing this could pull this off. I think it kind of goes both ways in that regard. Now, um, outside of that, my kind of final thoughts on this stuff and would I buy it? Um, I think for me, this is not one that is vibing with me. Uh, I don't, there's something in that, this rose tonka bean combination that for me is, it just doesn't work with my palette. And at least today, you know, this is really interesting. I wanted to mention this video is recently I had recorded a video about the Shoal Nold Spice. I did a full wearing with it. I put it through its paces and I made a nice video about a review of that. Now, just yesterday, I wore it again for my second wearing and what was really interesting I was observing is I had a pretty different experience the second time wearing it versus the first time wearing it. It wasn't better, it wasn't worse, it was just a different experience. The smell smelled differently to me and it makes me reflect on how you know you have to be in the right mood to wear certain scents. I think today for me this one didn't scratch the itch and I when I put it on after I put it on I was wearing it I'm like you know what I'm just kind of not in the mood for this day because I'm someone who does love the floral scents. Um, for whatever reason, this wasn't vibing with me today. So, but that said, I think this one, I, you see I have enough juice left. I am going to give it another wear at some point. And if I, you know, change how I feel about it, I'll come back to this video and leave a comment with an update. But that said, because of the quality of this stuff and how it smells, I can easily see somebody falling in love with this stuff. I think you're going to have to love rose and you're going to have to love that rose and tonka bean. It smells, uh, it's it's kind of polarizing to be honest. It's, it's one of those ones you're either going to love this or it's going to be, I want to say off-putting, but at the same time, I respect it because of the way the quality of it smells. It does smell very, very nice and high quality. It's just, you know, it is what it is. You're either going to like it or you're not going to like it with this one. So definitely, I would recommend getting a sample first. So that's my, my take on this. You know, if you have any questions or comments, feedback, leave them in the comments below. Real quick before I let you go, I want to share some exciting information. On Monday, I have uh, Oh Fresh by Bogart coming in. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to do a nice unboxing and review on that. And then with the rest of the Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, I have some really exciting ones that I'm looking forward to. I have been keeping them in the bag in that drawer. I haven't smelled them yet. I've been waiting to do it on live on camera for you guys. I have the uh, their homage to the vintage Polo Sport, which I'm looking forward to because my father wore Polo Sport. It's one that Polo Sport. It's one that I have a, a deep memory of. So I cannot wait to smell what theirs is. Another one that I'm really looking forward to is their homage to the vintage Wood Hue by Fabergé. I've read a little bit about that vintage after I found the Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements. I have the Fabergé Brute. I really love that. The uh, Wood Hue is apparently was released way earlier, I think in the 30s or 40s. I am really looking forward to that one. And also their homage to Old Spice, the vintage Schulten formula. They also have the homage to Brute that I have sitting in the drawer. And I have the vintage Brute. I have the vintage Old Spice. So in those videos, I'm going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons and see how they did. So... That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments or questions underneath this video. What'd you like? What didn't you like? What would you like to see? Have you ever worn this stuff or would you like to try it? Leave a comment below and let me know. I would love to get in discussion with you guys. And remember, love kindness to others. God bless.